A men's karate final at the Olympics ended in controversy after this kick was deemed too hard, and in this video we're going to talk about the physics and the science of what exactly went on. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. If I showed this still to any sports fan in the world, almost unanimously they'd probably tell me that the guy over here with the red belt, Tariq Hamadi, won. But it turns out he was disqualified because some rules that are nearly impossible for any non-hardcore karate fan to understand deemed that his kick was essentially too hard. And based on some physics and the physiology of concussions, that's such a terrible rule to have in the sport. In the side view of this whole sequence here, you can certainly see that Ganjade is leaning, first of all, downward. He's kind of leaning into this kick that comes in from Hamadi. Initially, there was some thought, well, maybe he kicked him in the neck and you're not allowed to do that in karate. But in a sport that's all about precision and technique, I don't think you get any more precise then where Hamadi lands the kick actually more to the jaw and the side of the head of Ganjade. You can even see where his eyes are pointing. I mean, almost directly to that spot where his kick lands. And so if you're gonna talk about precision, this is about as precise as it gets. Now we have to understand that karate, especially here in the Olympics, is not all about vicious highlight reel knockouts. Essentially, there's some rule that you can't follow through on your strikes and you can't over aggressively strike to basically kick or hit too hard, whatever that means. So because Ganjade was knocked unconscious here, that's sort of what leads into this subjective evidence of this kick being too hard. The problem with that from a pure scientific basis is there's no exact specific force or impact that will always cause a concussion from one person to the next. If Hamade were to deliver this exact kick to 10 other people, there's no guarantee that it would cause 10 more concussions. Similarly, he could deliver a strike that wasn't as intense or that wasn't as hard, and it could knock somebody out and still cause a concussion. There's almost no doubt that the visual of Ganjade on a spine board and knocked out contributed to the judge's decision that this was an illegal hit. But that's extremely flawed from a pure scientific basis because there's no objective way to classify how hard one hit is compared to another. We'll dive into that more here and then talk about what happened after the kick, but first I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video. Like most sports fans, I enjoy playing fantasy sports, but in recent years I've shied away from it because most of the platforms are either really outdated or they have such a heavy emphasis on just simply winning money. The sponsor of today's video, Sleeper, has brought me back into fantasy sports by taking it back to those social roots and completely modernizing the way that we think about fantasy sports. Sleeper is a modern fantasy experience, truly designed to connect people over sport with its integrative chat functions and a really sleek interface. You can host your fantasy football, basketball, and esports leagues, and the best part is it's completely free absolutely no ads. Sleeper has all the features you need to run your fantasy league and it's going to give you ultimate control over the exact experience that you and your friends want to have. It's also the fastest growing fantasy platform with millions of users signing up almost entirely through word of mouth so you know it's going to have the ongoing support that you need to really run your league well. It makes me so happy to see a successful platform like this that's taking fantasy sports back to those roots of connecting with your friends and that true social experience that made fantasy sports fun to begin with. So click the link in the description below to get signed up, download the Sleeper mobile app, and get started on drafting your fantasy team today. Let's get back to those roots of what made fantasy sports so fun to begin with and do it all in a super sleek, modern, totally different fantasy platform experience. Thank you again to Sleeper for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to our learning. When we think about what's happening with a concussion, we have our brain that basically floats around in the spinal fluid of our skull. When the head gets struck, there's this force transmitted in through the brain, the skull moves, and the brain tends to basically bounce back and forth off the inside of the skull, causing a traumatic brain injury. You can see here as Ganjade's head is coming down towards Hamade's foot, initially the head is nice and still. We can even see, you know, the hair really isn't moving too much, but then as soon as that first kick impact comes in, we already see a little bit of that energy being transferred based on how we start to see some of the hair honestly move. But then if we go forward a couple more frames, right about there, that's where you can see all of that energy that's been transferred up into Ganjade's skull that's subsequently gonna transfer into the brain and cause the concussion. A lot of the rationale for why this shouldn't have been disqualified is of course that Ganjade leaned into the kick, which made it worse. And from a physics basis, that's again, 100% true. All forms of energy have to be conserved. And if we have two objects that collide, we have to have conservation of their momentum. Momentum is a factor of the mass of an object and the velocity with which it's moving. So if I have two objects with very large mass and very large velocity, they're going to have very high momentum. 
but when they collide, that momentum has to be conserved in the form of energy. That means if one of those objects is staying still, it has zero momentum. If a punch comes in and hits it, there's going to be less energy there to distribute. But if that second object is moving and the impact object is moving, now they both have momentum, and so there's going to be a higher energy. During this kick, Ganjade's head is moving directly down into the vector or in the direction of where Hamade's kick is going to come up. So then Hamade's kick comes up and it's also essentially in nearly that exact same direction. So you have two objects whose velocity vectors are essentially right in line with one another. And because they're both moving, there's going to be a higher energy that's transferred during that impact. The mass and velocity of the different objects affects which one moves after the impact. And you can see that Hamade's foot it doesn't really move much at all. Basically, Ganjade's head takes all of that energy. So yes, from a pure scientific basis, the fact that Ganjade's head is moving gives his head additional momentum, which gives additional energy for this collision. Also real quick, even though his eyes are open here, this doesn't mean that he was faking it in any sense. Again, because concussions are so different with how they present an impact that hard, a reaction like this, there's no reason to suspect that he was faking it or milking it. There's no rule that says if you have a concussion, your eyes have to be closed. So hopefully we can at least put that side of things to rest. Real quick, I wanna also talk about what the medical staff did because I thought they handled things really well here. Right off the bat, they have one responder who goes to the head and they have a second responder out here. So the guy at the head is responsible to try to maintain the neck, stabilize the spine in case there was a spine injury. We can see him kind of tap on the shoulder, basically first step, sir, you know, hey, are you there? Are you awake? Are you awake? They don't get any sort of a response. At this point, I guarantee they've looked at his breathing. They've checked his pulse to make sure he's not in any sort of cardiac arrest. Next, it looks like they're getting out a little pin light here to basically check his pupil responses to see, again, signs of brain injury. And then finally here, we can see Ganjade kind of eventually respond and come to. In these situations, when somebody is unconscious and you're concerned about a neck injury, you have to assume the worst and put them on the backboard put him in a cervical collar. So most likely once they got him back to the locker rooms or whatever, he was a little bit more alert, they could do a better exam. And then they were able to clear and rule out the possibility of a neck injury. So that's it for this video, truly a wild moment. And I hope something that this sport changes because while hardcore karate fans might agree with this decision, there's just no scientific basis for how you can allow a judge to determine if something was too hard of an impact. If you're going to go purely on if somebody gets knocked out, you open up the sport to all sorts of controversy. And even then, there's no consistent force from one person to the next that's going to cause a concussion with an impact. But I hope you learned something here about the scientific basis of why I didn't agree with what happened here. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.